Hey, Keith, this is Gabe and Scott, and we want to thank you for taking time to, to learn about the Nexmo robot mower. The agenda is really simple, just quick introductions. We'll, we'll give you an understanding of who, who is URS robot, and then we'll describe how the Nexmo wor mower works thing and just the benefits that our customers are seeing with the product. And of course, Q&A along the way. Don't, don't hesitate to ask questions. So URS Robot, it's a three-year-old company started in 2019. URS is an acronym for Your Service Robot. And our vision in the, in the future is to build a series of service robots that people can use in their uh, daily life. And in particular, um, we're build, trying to build robots for the business sector. So the first product we've been working on and launching the last three years is a robotic lawnmower system. And it's really the first one that's wireless. So you don't bury wires, there's no charging station. Um, it's really the future of technology. This service robot is something that is used with a landscaper. And our customers that are really adopting it are professional landscape companies, schools and cities. Our expertise is a combination of sell your phone expertise from the technology side and then Scott and I and people that we're building on the team here bring the experience from the outdoor power equipment in the landscape industry. And that's very different, I think, than uh, other companies that are out there. Yeah, absolutely. We come from, we're more of a technology company putting our technology into a robot versus a lawnmower company trying to uh, robot, make a robot out of their lawnmower. Stephen Chen and Thomas Wu are two co-founders. Um, they collectively built a company in the past called Compal Wireless, which was the largest cell phone manufacturer in the world. And they actually, if you think about the advancement of technology, they went literally from building pagers to the smartphones, 68 million cell phones a year for some of these brands, Apple, Google, Nokia, Samsung, and essentially every major cell phone manufacturer player, they built the phones. They also built iPads since the first generation, Alexa, Google, um, all, the, all the voice activated devices. So our expertise as a company is really all about cell phone technology, the ability to map and navigate outside. What we're going to show you is the next Mo. We call it the M1. It's version one. We launched it in March of this year. It's the third generation of mowers that has been out. They built, built mowers in the past um, exclusively for the Taiwan market. And what we're going to share with you today is the version that's been adopted and built for the U.S. market. Fundamentally, the big difference, like we uh, are saying, is our system, our robots run off wireless technology, and we'll explain some further details. Um, it's easy to operate with an app, and it really gives you, the landscape customer, the ability to redeploy your labor. Um, and I'm sure uh, labor, you know, labor is a big challenge for everybody. So whether you want to increase your business without hiring more people all the time in a linear uh, model, you can grow your business and deploy robots, or you can close the gap if you have labor challenges. Um, you, could, you could leave the mowing to the robots and redeploy your team to do other things, whether it's tree trimming or other detail stuff at the customer site which may give you more profit margin and the ability to grow your business. But that's the fundamental benefit to you guys. And that's course, right. It's yeah, and it's a robot mower running off battery, so there's no gas, no fumes. It's good for the environment. Yeah, and we, uh, we like to tell customers when we demo, such as yourself, that uh, instead of you having your uh, employees in the seat of the mower, they're controlling it with the app. So... Um, they're still doing the mowing. So we want to pause for a second and just kind of um, see if you had any questions at this point, or do you want us to move along? Um, as far as as far as size lots and everything that you know, you're able to use this um, this mower. Can I deploy? Is it just one, or is it multiple mowers? Can you tell me a little bit how that all plays, and then 
um, like the size acreages mm -hmm. or, you know, HOAs. I have big, you know, commercial lots with lots of acreages that, you know, I want to try to use or adopt this technology in and just kind of want to see how that all, you know, works out with, with this, you know, uh, USR mower. We will give you a little details of how you can do multi-mower deployment. And we're the first mower system where you can deploy multiple mowers in one domain um, up from one to 10. Yeah. So currently the limit is, is 10. Yeah. It's 10. Okay. But, yeah. But the mowers will work in as a team. They'll divide up the task equally and they will work together seamlessly to complete the job. Oh, wow. So this is just, I'll just give you a quick overview about the mower. And you you had a question about the size of the mower. This is the, the Kirk Nexmo product. If you looked at it from uh, the outside top-down view, you have the cellular phone antenna, which is this white dome here. That's actually mm -hmm. connect. It's connecting uh, via cell phone connection. We're using a 4G service. So it connects to the cloud for all the computing, navigation, and mapping information. We use a RTK GPS system that's been built around the country and used primarily for the agriculture business. That gives you the ability, with what towers already built and installed around the country, it allows us to create maps and then let you show up and drop and mow as many or as little mowers as you need and it allows you to go from site to site. There are four ultrasonic sensors on the mower. So there's two on the front and two on the side. And during mowing uh, the mowing task, if you were to stand in front of the mower, the two front ultrasonic sensors would stop the mower about three feet from uh, if you were standing there or some object. It'll do a voice command and ask you to move. If you don't, it'll go back and make that attempt two more times. And on the third pass, it'll go around you or the object. Object. Okay. When, the, when the mower is done mowing, it'll know that's an area not mowed and it'll go back there and attempt to mow again. So there's some um, memory built into the process and that takes place. The, the two ultra sensor sonics on the side provide a, a warning uh, that uh, the, the mower is in operation. It'll just ask you to stand back away from the mower. <laughs> so there's a LED light that is an indicator for sort of the connectivity with the mower, a, a manual stop button if you want to stop it while you're out there. And then you've got a, a back door here. There's a, ba a battery door that pops up and there's a swappable lithium ion battery that you charge with a charging dock and then place in the mower. The battery gets about five to six hours of runtime and it takes three hours to charge. If you want it to run longer, you can just swap batteries when the battery uh, runs out and, and get more than six hours of runtime in a day. So that's a possibility and, there. And this system notifies you once it's I mean, as far as the battery life, it, it'll notify you on the app that it's needs to be charged out or it's getting close to being to need to be in charge or swapped out. Yes, um, it'll do a push notification through the app on your phone mm -hmm. and it'll okay. tell you it needs a battery change. Yeah. The, the mower, when it's starting to run out of battery charge, when it gets down to 10%, it'll go back to a virtual home base. Um, so you could pick up the mower really quick and just swap batteries. So that's a feature that's built into the operation. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, you can obviously control the whole thing with the uh, the Nexmo app. Um, there's an Apple version and an Android version. If you flip the mower upside down and look underneath it, there's a, about a 14-inch cutting deck width, which is typically 25% bigger than most of the original you know, homeowner design robot mower. So it's a bigger deck because it's for commercial use. And it has <laughs> five, it has five blades that retract during off. If you hit something, they'll retract, but five cutting blades that you replace with a Phillips screwdriver. Um, most of the homeowner mowers have three blades. So again, five blades, bigger cutting deck surface because it's designed for commercial use. Um, got, you know, drive motors underneath. 
The drive motors in our machine now have a heat dissipation fan system to, because, you know, we're, these mowers can operate, you know, repeatedly up to, you know, 12 hours if you wanted to. So that's a new feature that um, you probably won't find, an, find another robot mowers because other ones have to go back and recharge after two hours of runtime. So it's a robust, more robust um, drive motor for the wheels. So you don't burn um, out your mower or your burn out your motors, I guess, in your wheels, right? Yeah, yeah. But okay. from a from a pers yeah from, from a perspective of just kind of uh, maintenance and such, you're replacing blades probably every three months, depending on how much mowing you're doing and the type of grass. Okay. And then other other wear parts would be the rubber on the tires and maybe the wheels. Uh, but there's not a lot of wear and tear on the mower. It's it weighs about 58 pounds, so you don't you know unless you're unless they accidentally get dropped. They kind of like are really, um, there's quite a bit of a lifespan to the mower. Um, okay. Battery, op yeah, battery operated, low noise, 68 decibel. And then the cut height currently, um, you can you can adjust the cut height from one and a half to four inches and that's done by the app. Okay. Uh, the warranty on the machine is two years. Warranty on the battery is two years as well. Okay. It's commercial warranty. Yeah, commercial warranty. Commercial warranty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a quick illustration of what I kind of described as far as the ultra sensors go. But when it, the object, when the mower detects an object within three feet, it triggers the mower to stop and a voice command comes out. Uh, some mowers in the past would stop and then the operator would, would trigger a message and the operator has to go out there and figure out what's going on and, and restart the mower. And really, because this is designed for commercial use, we want the mower to detect issues that cause that could cause a safety hazard, uh, make a decision. And, and then the object, of course, is to navigate around objects and situations to continue the mowing task. Yeah, the goal is for it when it, when it encounter, encounters an, a challenge that it can use the artificial intelligence in it to recover and continue mowing. Okay. What, what's the speed we, of, uh, of the mowers? I mean, like, uh, yeah, the, the, how, how fast ground, do they go? The actual ground speed of the mower is approximately 1.7 miles per hour in high speed. So we'll, we can cover that more, uh, as uh, acres per hour and mow as we go through this. Okay. This mower has been developed and during the development process, we worked with a lot of professional landscape customers in cities like yourself, and we've run them in open parks, HOAs, you know, had to put it through the test to make sure it was safe to operate by its own in an open space. That's really the point is, uh, they can mow and they're safe. So, so those are the safety features built into the mower from a from a navigation and using the ultra sensors. Okay. In this slide, it's it shows the mower. And it shows the connectivity to the GPS satellite system, and then it shows the RTK uh, base station, which is part of a national network. It's heavily used in agriculture. And essentially what it's doing with a connection through 4G to the internet, it is taking a GPS satellite signal and it's making it accurate to two centimeters. So the, the mower knows where it is within two centimeter accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, in addition, because of this network system, <clears throat> you can navigate multiple mowers in one domain. So to kind of address your earlier question, that's how we're, um, when you deploy the mower, if you deployed two mowers, it would take the mowing task and then divide it by two or the number of mowers on the site and split the task up and they go off and mow each of their domain areas, subdomains within the, the one, one landscape area. So it has a lot of intelligence built into it from that perspective. Um, 
but this is one of why well, it might be the only one right now, but there's not a lot of other systems that can allow multi-mower deployment. Yeah, so this particular mower, you could pick it up, take it from the West Coast and go to the East Coast and it still would work. You mm -hmm. drop, mow and go. There's no RTK towers that need to be installed on the site. There are no e-posts connectivity that needs to be installed, no tricks. It's just true drop, mow, and go. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, so we're going to give you, uh, we'll show you, play this video for you. And this is really just showing how easy it is to um, build a virtual fence, a, a boundary, okay? Yeah, and this is the first introduction to of the what we call the virtual marker. You can map with the robot, but the virtual marker is a walking stick that allows you to map much more efficiently. That's great because uh, the ground wire thing with like Husqvarna, I mean, that's, that's never really worked out great in my experience. So, and this is a, this is a big game changer as far as mapping. I, I like this. Yeah. Okay. So this is Ian and he scans the virtual marker and then Kind of a quick video but he's walking the perimeter to create the perimeter perimeter map first once he's created this map you see the blue line here that's the boundary that he created for this property so the first step is to create the boundary and then you can create a keep out zone or a no mo zone after that after you've created the boundary so um, that's the video he just did. He actually, I, I didn't show this real quick of what he was uh, mapping, but this this point, uh, you'll see this mapping point here, that's the um, virtual home base that he created. I didn't include it in, this, in the screen here, but you can actually create a virtual home base, and that's where the robots go at the completion of the MO task. Um, so the first step is creating the boundary. And then this is, uh, you can create as many keep out zones, but this is Ian creating a keep out zone. Okay. And the difference between the boundary and keep out zones is that you can take your map and you can add keep out zones and take them out of the map at any time in the, in the app, they're saved. Mm -hmm. The mapping is kind of the biggest task because you map one time on a property. Of course, what Scott's describing is, let's say there is an area on the grass with maybe there's a broken water pipe underneath. You can't mow there right now. You could create a keep out zone there real quick and just you know, prevent the mower from mowing for a week or two until you repair that part of the lawn and then delete that keep out zone. So they can be temporary from that perspective, or if it's a flower bed or a tree and you wanna leave that permanent, um, you could leave keep out zones permanent, but you have the total flexibility to do that. And once you've built the map, you have a, um, a library on your phone of all the maps of your clients. Um, and now you just need to deploy them. So let me show you how that happens. So this is a video of Ian now deploying two mowers in this zone. You can control the cut height here. He's scanning, so each mower has its own QR code. And what he's doing is he's connecting the mowers to the satellite, our server in the cloud. And in real time, it splits the mowing task in half. And now the mowers are going off to mow their section of the property. And that's really how easy wow. it is. Um, if you showed up that day with two mowers or foam, four mowers or one mower, again, you have the flexibility to deploy as many as you need. Um, and you can take them from site to site. So the mowers are not synchronized to a specific domain. You have the flexibility to go with mowers to any domain with our our, our platform okay. if the mowers if it was a really large property and you needed to take like let's say a day and a half to mow you could finish the mow that day come back the next day 
and it'll know, the system will know you did not complete the first mow. So you just click finish mowing. It'll go finish mowing the uncut area only. So there's there's some intelligence built into that, um, you know, sort of mapping and mowing memory system. But you're not bearing wires. There's no charging station. Um, it's all done through this connectivity. Okay. How about going over like boundaries? If you have a, a section, it does one section and you have uh, concrete or whatever else and you have to go to another section, can you uh, adapt this to do that as well? And then to, you know, different properties have different, you know, sections that you kind of have to go over. So um, that was, <laughs> that was a great lead in because I'll show you this. This is a map of a oh, corporate campus. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So this is a campus of a big, big global manufacturer in Silicon Valley. But you can see that this, this property, um, we have four map zones. The first one on the far left here is actually a softball field. It's really big. Uh, second softball field open park area, same thing over here. And then this zone is like uh, six different lawns that are separated by a walking sidewalk. And what, what we did is we mapped, you know, these, these four zones over here are easy to map, they're big areas. This one, you basically map the essential of like a, a gate to go, to, for the mower to go in between. Um, so you just drop mowers here and they mow one lawn, go to the next lawn, mow that, go to the next lawn and mow the other ones. So it follows this kind of pattern path and you're essentially mowing all six lawns and they just navigate across the sidewalks. The sidewalks, through okay. The, yeah, through the virtual gate that you build. So yeah. it's really simple to do. Uh, so, so that's easy to do with this virtual mapping capability. And with a little bit of uh, planning before you map, you can you can really do some pretty creative things, but on this particular property, it was all about before mapping, you know, establishing the plan and then creating the virtual pathways and the virtual gates. Pathways. Okay. Well, you always start with the outer outer edge, though, as far as when you're you do yeah, your you boundary do first, the and then okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You always do the perimeter, but uh, again. You know, this is uh, the better that you get at mapping, the more successful you'll be with our product. Okay. The other two screenshots here are of the actual app from the screen. And what you see here is um, this is that large baseball softball field over here. Um, when you deploy the mowers, it's going to tell you how long it takes to complete, what's the cut height you've set, um, and then the progress of the mower. So if you have multiple mo multiple mowers running, you'll see the progress for each one. And of course, if you increase the number of mowers on a on a domain property, you you increase the cutting speed performance of getting the job done. Right. The mower will automatically, when you drop them on a location, the AI in the system will automatically calculate the fastest path to cut. So for example, it, this would be the fastest direction to mow. If you want to override that and you want to change the, the direction of the mowing path, you can do that now manually and override the AI. So that's a possibility. That's a new feature we added. And then at the end of the mowing task, you capture a lot of data. You you find out, you'll get a report that shows when the mowers were, mowers were started, when they stopped, how many mowers ran, and the time it took to, to mow. And you it'll believe. take... Yeah, and it'll take uh, eight photos of the finished product as well. So the mower will rotate around, oh, wow. take pictures of the finished mowing. This particular campus, the landscaper was using three, three landscape crew members to manage this property. And they had the flexibility to reduce that to two when they started deploying the mowers and left all the mowing to the robots. Um, and then this is just a shot of the finished product because at the end of the day, you you know you have to have a, a nice looking lawn. Um, and this is one of the first mowers that actually cuts in stripes. So just kind of play this. Oh yeah, 
looks great. Yeah, if you're if you're going to take the time and energy to grow turf, you want it to look nice, and that's one of the things that our product does that others don't. Is that we do pattern mowing, and we leave an end result that's very pleasing. It's very clean. Yeah. I think, I mean, you've covered everything really well. Um, I, th I think it just comes down to me, you know, wanting to have a demo with it, try it out in my, my business, see how it kind of applies. Um, Absolutely. I don't That's see it really, really going like for the smaller, like smaller houses that, you know, you go in and out of that are smaller footprints i guess to use this it would i guess i would want to apply it to larger like you know larger the larger properties that i that i'm doing right now that you know my, my biggest issue right now is labor so getting people and this is this is a huge consideration for me right now so i love yeah, it you're into your intu intuition's right you need to this is not this is not going to be a product or a solution if you're just doing a lot of smaller homeowner smaller properties. Properties, yeah, yeah I don't see it for you, that. Yeah, you can get in and out of those properties quickly with a push mower or even a stand-on. But you're right. So the sort of the optimal size is larger than an acre, acre and a half. Anywhere from that going forward, because that's where you're going to get the optimization and. Uh, what we can do after this call is if you send us a list of the properties, uh, as an example, what we can do is give you a, like a estimated mowing schedule and show you for a certain property how long it would take to mow deploying some combination of mowers, two, three, or four, to give you a sense of like how the efficiency gets built in with these pods of robot mowers. Yes, and I think when you really pull the covers back and you do the analysis of uh, mowing by robot, robot versus mowing by man and machine, especially gasoline powered, the uh, the cost per acre of mowing is dramatically lower. Mm -hmm. So the ROI is from a business perspective can be uh, very attractive. Yeah, yeah for so the what I pay in equipment, yeah, for what I pay in equipment and gas and employees, and then. This, this makes a lot of sense. And we kind of look at it more too as a force multiplier. It's like uh, taking the crew that you have and, and maximizing their production and efficiency. And uh, I think if you pull the covers back and really look at it, that this could be very attractive to you. And uh, we look forward to having the opportunity to like, demo it to you in person. That'd be great. I would, I would really like that. Yeah, that's... Uh... I think to get some information on, you know, um, I guess the savings of, you know, time and uh, especially, you know, per acre, I guess, um, you know, deploying one to five mowers at a time, depending on the size that I'm trying to, you know, get mowed. And then I can have my employees, you know, work on edging other projects that I have a better rate at than mowing per se um, would be. I think huge savings. So, um, especially over a long period of time. So, uh, I really appreciate it. And then, yeah, yeah, this is absolutely. Thanks for your time today. We'll follow up with an email with some of those um, deliverables. And if you can give us a couple address locations of some of the properties, we can give you a kind of a estimation of like mo time and productivity. Okay. And that'll, that'll I can definitely do that. Kind of, yeah, that'll help you understand, like, how you might be able to deploy this into your business. Yep, I already have all the all the data for what it takes my employees to do it. So, um, I think this will be, uh, like I said, it's be really interesting to see. Um, I love the technology. I mean, this is the future. So. Um, I think this is going to be. That's what we're trying to do is we welcome you to enter into the future with us. So yes, I <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, and then you see it all over the place. So um, all right, I really appreciate your time and and uh, show me this incredible, incredible mower. This is this is amazing. So.
Thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank All you. right. Thank, Thank you, guys. Much.